Welcome back to our lessons on debt and interest rate products. We have Bill Addis joining us here in studio again. We talked in our previous sessions about CDOs and CLOs. Those are collateralized debt obligations and collateralized loan obligations. Now, before we look at the negative side here, I want to emphasize there is a good point to these. These are a great instrument Absolutely. idea. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and like many of the structured products, they were fulfilled a specific need. Mm -hmm. Investors were looking for high quality bonds. Issuers were looking to issue debt of different structures. So there was a mutual need here. I do think what we've seen, though, is with the proliferation of this product, as extreme as it's been, I mean, the CLO marketplace is now over a $2 trillion market. And if you go back to 2006, it wasn't even on the radar screen. Mm -hmm. So products tend to come in and out of vogue. You know, it's like right now there's less mortgage-backed product being originated because mortgage deals are down, housing costs are down, there's not a lot of refinancing. Right. Whereas this market that we're talking about, the CLO marketplace, has just exploded. Absolutely in vogue. Um, I want to go back to the numbers because you mentioned some. I believe it was 28% somewhere into... We've, had, we've seen a 28% increase oh, since 2016 in the size of this market. I mean, how many products are growing by 26% a year in a two-year period? Right. I mean, it's just been incredible. But the problem is embedded in this growth is a lot more credit risk. Right. And, and this is where you know, we've had the discussion. I think Wall Street tends to take an idea and just beat it to death. And I think we're getting to that situation here. Because to explain, the, the CLO is when a bank makes a commercial loan. Just like when they used to make a residential mortgage loan mm -hmm. to you and I, they take that asset, in this case the loan, and put it and issue a bond against that. So you're buying a bond that is actually backed by the loans that the banks have made. Well, the problem is because the banks are now much more free to give away money because they're not carrying the risk, there's not a lot of restrictions or covenants to these loans. They're mm -hmm. what they're called covenant light, meaning the bank hasn't done in much to protect themselves because they don't have to worry about being protected. Right. The we risk just, is borne by you, the investor. Right. So this product is exploding, kind of coming into vogue, but at the same time, we're putting a lot more credit risk into the market. That, right. That's the cautionary note here. You know, and we mentioned in a previous session where if you look at the rating, if you go back to just the retail investor, I think this mm -hmm. is a good example. The retail investor in 2005, it was pretty cheap money. There wasn't a lot of risk out there. People could still qualify for loans. But as that market really elevated, we got to 2006 and seven, and even teetering in 2008, the average investor was having a, a difficult time, um, actually, let me rephrase that, was not having a difficult time, it was the exact <laughs> opposite of it, was having the easiest time getting a mortgage, right. right? You could just say, do you have a job? No, okay, great. How long have you been working there? I just told you I don't have a job. <laughs> Here's a three hundred thousand dollar loan. Right. And you know we we hear about this term liar loans. Well, that was the retail side, and we saw once the retail investors could no longer make their mortgage payments, what that did to the market. Exactly. I mean, we, we fell fifty four percent in a year. Right. This is a different story, and I think this is bears repeating, because if the retail investor collapsed the market by having extended themselves too much, and mind you, it was corporations as well, and, and extending their margin and leveraging too much, if that caused a 54% drop, what happens to a system when the cause is the financial institutions? Right. That's so, and I think exactly. that's what we're setting up for with these CLOs and seeing the, the amount of issuance out there. These corporations are running to the point where they're not able to make their payments. That's correct. And we've had a great interest rate environment for yeah. the last eight years. We've had low interest rates, stagnant interest rates. And in that market, in corporations were very willing to take on a lot of risk, a yep. lot of leverage. Well, that's not to say interest rates are going to stay low or the economy is going to continue to bail them out, if you will, for lack yeah. of a better <laughs> word. Um, and with any sort of a downturn, there's a lot of precarious, perilous paper out there. That, that is exactly it. And it is, although you and I as individual consumers don't see it, in terms of aggregate size, it's impressive. Right. And we might see it by way of our ETFs or our mutual funds own this type of paper. But more importantly, I think, as you're stressing, the impact to the overall economy right. is something we have to give credence it, to. It, it makes it a systemic problem. And, and I right. think that you know some of us would go, well, it's not going to impact me. It will. We've mentioned this before, that if you're holding a 401k or an investment account, you most likely do have part of these CDOs or CLOs as an aspect or an element of your portfolio. So should that asset collapse, you are going to feel the hit. So it's really important that you understand how this is going to impact you and, and where this is going to impact you. Uh, let's take a look at this visual here just so we can kind of show you the increase in CLOs. 
issuance. Now, this goes back to, well, we got all the way back to 2005, but what's interesting is in 2009, nobody was doing anything right. in this space. Walk us through this visual here. Yeah, what you're basically seeing here is coming out of the recession, banks were not willing to lend money. It's just that simple. <laughs> so, you know, the banks would claim, well, nobody was asking for it. But as this chart shows, the banks were simply not, not in the business of lending money. And it was during that period of time that we saw growth in the bond market because banks, the bond market could absorb size. Mm -hmm. So we had a huge predominance of bond issuances, which is why we talk about the credit bubble now. You know, the credit bubble applies to most credit product, yes. whether it's corporate bonds, municipal bonds, sovereign debt. Now, in the case of bank loans here, what we're saying is after the recession, because the banks were so scared, they weren't in the lending and, and activity. And rightfully so, again, rightfully credit. Rightfully so, absolutely. <laughs> But now, as you can see, since 2013 on this chart, and in fact, by this was as of December 7th by 2018, by year end we did cross prior years, that this now market has become so large. And again, I'm, I'm stressing without being too pessimistic, the amount of credit risk that's going into this. If this market were growing and it was not covenant light loans, but they had the strength and mm -hmm. stability, I don't think anybody would be adding a cautionary note. It's the fact that so many of these loans, 85%, do not qualify for any sort of credit enhancement. That's dangerous. That is very dangerous. Now, you know, one thing that, uh, in hindsight, we can all look back at the housing market crisis or the credit crisis of 2008, like, man, if I could have just shorted my home, right? right? If I could have <laughs> sold it right away uh, and made money on it, it would have been a great opportunity. We do have that opportunity now. Um, if you see the moment when this market starts to turn or we start to see companies default on their debt, which could be a very real reality. Remember, we're at triple B ratings for a lot of debt out there. That's just a step above junk. If people get into junk status, junk generally means there's a real good chance that they could default on their Absolutely. payments. And if that continues, that could really create a systemic problem where we see massive declines in the markets. How could one profit in an environment like that? Well, the ETF product area has really offered a variety of different alternatives. Mm -hmm. So, for example, there are inverse ETFs that trade to the corporate bond or the high yield market, where if the index of on a junk bond goes down, the value of your ETF goes up. So there's the short junk bond ETF, which is an inverse ETF. So thanks to the ETF product area, there are ways of trading the bond market because historically, bonds have been very illiquid. Right. You know, that's been a problem for the average individual, but by trading a bond ETF, that's trading to an index, let's say a junk bond index or mm -hmm. an investment grade index. This now gives the retail investor the opportunity to take advantage of some of these liquidity situations, which used to be for the institutional markets. Right. The bond market traditionally was institutionally dominated. Now, thanks to these ETFs, you, can, love you can trade the credit risk inherent in the bond market. Let's bring in the retail investor in the whole equation. Um, <clears throat> so there are investment vehicles. You can go out there and look at a lot of ETFs, which could be long the bond market, and you could short those. Right. But remember, in a lot of your retirement accounts, you cannot short. So you could buy what are called inverse ETFs, which might reflect that bond market going the opposite direction. And you could buy those and technically short when this market drops. Bottom line is it's all about information, everybody, and making sure that you have the right investments at the right time for the right market situations. Now, I want to encourage you, if you'd like to learn more about how to profit in an environment where we see this debt bubble start to implode, I would encourage you to click that link below to get more information.